<coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xiao Sun, and it's my pleasure to give a presentation here. My topic today is pre-image attacks on round radius key chunks via an allocating approach. And this work is done with my PhD, Ting Li. And this talk will contain five paths. In the first path, we will introduce the background and some main uh, our main contributions. And in the second part, we will talk about the structure of catch hacks. And in the third part, we will give a brief review of our previous work, which is important to our, talk, uh, our work in this talk. And in the last two paths, we will take the three round key check, key check, sorry, ah, uh, three round key check two two four as an example to illustrate our basic and improved method. So <coughs> let's see the overview. There are three types of attacks on a hash function: pre-image attack, collision attack, and the second pre-image attack. Our work focuses on the pre-image attack. That is, given a digest H, we need to send a message M such that H equals to hash M. And this is a short introduction to the key check ag algorithm, which is the most important algorithm at present, and hash function at present. <coughs> and uh, after MD5 and SHA1 was written, and uh, NIST holds the chassis competition. And there are 64 algorithms that were submitted. And four years later, Kichak won. And three years later, it becomes SHA-3 officially. And SHA-3 and Kichak have many different instances, different in the length of the out output digest. Our work focuses on the instances instances with digest of 224 and 256. <coughs> this is a short summary of our work. We present a multi-block pre-image attack model, and this is the first time of multi-block method applied to the key chunk algorithm, and uh, the standard key chunk algorithm. And so we provide the best theoretical complexities on three and four run key check two two four and two five six. And we also give a first practical the first practical pre image attack on three round key check two two four. And here are the detailed results. <coughs> we improved the previous best results by using this multi model mm, method. And uh, we can see from the table that the, mm, run, uh, the, <coughs> the instances of three round, the improvements on the instances of three round uh, are significant. <coughs> and here is a practical attack. We successfully found a, a second pre-image for the message one in practical time, and our codes are publicly available at GitHub. Now let's talk about the structure of KeyCheck. <coughs> the the KeyCheck algorithm uses the famous the boundary construction. It absorbs messages that are split into blocks and uh, squeeze the digest. Uh, generally, a state of the KeyCheck is represented as a cube. And uh, the standard version contains 24 runs, and uh, each run consists of five operations. The first operation is state operation. It is linear and diffuse the bits. And the second one is a row operation. It rotates the bits along the length. It is also linear. And the third, the linear <coughs> operation is pi. It is a permutation in the slices. And the fourth operation is the only non-linear operation, chi. And the last one, iota, as a constant to the first first lane, <coughs> add a constant to the first lane, uh, which which is used to break the symmetric along the lanes. And this is the Kachak. <coughs> the Kachak team also hold a crunchy crypto pre-image and collision contest to encourage the study of Kachak. 
and uh, the instances in this challenge are weaker, and their theoretical complexity is only 2 power 80. <coughs> and uh, this is the current status of the challenge. Only one full round instance is broken, but uh, there are many lower rounds that are unbroken. And our names are here. <coughs> uh, we found a pre-image in five days with eight GPU cards, and this work is done in the summer of 2017, but uh, it is still the last uh, challenge that has been broken. And in the next, uh, next part, we will talk about the attack on this challenge because it motivates our multi-mode, multi, <coughs> multi-block mode. And this is the, first, uh, the third part, a brief review of our previous work. <coughs> uh, basically, the pre-image problem equals to solving a polynomial system, which usually has multiple solutions. And the, challenge, the challenges with lower rungs are sought by the thought server, set, self, set solver directly, and uh, the instance of higher rungs with larger states can be broken by the linearization of the structure of key check. But for the three round challenge with small state, with small state the previous linearization method does not work, so we also use some algebraic technique. And the key step of this work is that we do not linearize all the five output bits of the Chi operation. Instead, we linearize parts of the bits from the structure of Keychuck, and we linearize the other, the other bits using algebraic operations. <laughs> and the details of all this work are omitted here. We only show the pipeline. At the beginning, we set two rows of the initial state to be variable, and the others are set to zero. And uh, in order to avoid the, myth, the diffusion brought by the operation state, we also assume the sums of the columns to be constants. And this is the first run. <coughs> the yellow boxes means, uh, means this bit. Sorry. Uh, the yellow boxes mean this bits are linear with respect to the unknowns, and the gray one and white ones are constants. We can see that in the end of the first round, all bits are linear. Similarly, we also assume assume the sums of the, con the the sum of the columns at constants in the second round, and in the end of the second round, we notice that there are several blue boxes, meaning these bits are quadratic bits with respect to the unknowns. And in each slice, there are five. And this five quadratic bits will be diffused to all the bits after the operation set. <coughs> and uh, from the other direction, we can construct it 80 quadratic polynomials from the given digest. And now we get a quadratic polynomial system. Because the, in this attack, because the degrees of the freedom is very small, so we have to solve this quadratic polynomial using algebraic techniques. And the total complexity is 2 power 45, and uh, <coughs> it can be done in practical time. This is our previous work. <coughs> it motivates a multi-block. And the ne next slide C, a basic attack on the three run key check 224. This is our previous attack. <coughs> we notice that in the end, sorry, in the end of the second, for second forward run, there are five quadratic bits in each slice, and these quadratic bits will be disturbed to all the bits, and uh, we have to construct quadratic polynomials and uh, this is hard to solve. <coughs> so a natural idea is that if we want to improve this attack, we'd better to linearize all the bits in the end of the second round and uh, at a lower cost of degree of freedom. So a question is why these quadratic bits are generated? And the question and the problem com comes from the request that the <coughs> the bits in the capacity must be zero. 
and they cannot be set to other values or unknowns. So this is our motivation. If we want to linearize two runs at with, with a lower cost, we must break the limits of, from the capacity. And this leads to a multi-block approach naturally. But <coughs> a key step is that the multi-block multi -block, mm, approach must have a lower complexity compared to the one-block attack. And uh, so the constraints on the middle state must be weak. And the middle state is just the output of the first block and the initial state of the second block. So how weak? <coughs> From the capacity, there are 400, 448 constraints. And from the digest, we have 224 constraints. So the constraints on the middle state must be smaller than the minimal one. And only in this case, the multi-block attack can outperform, outperform the one-block attack. And uh, another case is that the middle state should also make the system easier to solve. So we start this way and uh, see which middle state uh, should be used. <coughs> and this is, the mid this is the ideal case. That is, if we set the initial state like this, uh, two rows are set to unknowns, and uh, row one and row three are set to zeros, and the last row are set to ones. We can prove that uh, with this setting, we can linearize all the bits at the end of the second round, and uh, we can obtain the best degree of freedom after two forward run. So this is the ideal case. But <coughs> so the state A can serve as the middle state. But if we require the output of the first block to meet the state A, we must have 448 constraints. This is too expensive. So on seeing this, we change our target. We realize that to get the eff equivalent effect uh, in the end of the second round, it surfaces to meet the state B. This is a bit easier because we can choose the values of the sums of the columns during the state operation. <coughs> and this is our main theory of this work. It proves that if the if the bits in the state A prime satisfy the following two constraints, then we will obtain the state B after the state operation. By this theorem, we do not require the bits in the capacity of the A prime equals to one or to zero strictly. Instead, we only require the differences between different rows. That is, <coughs> by this theorem, we only require the bits in the second row and the fourth, fourth row are equal, and the last row are just their complements. As many of the bits in the A prime state can be adjusted by the second method block, so we do not, uh, particularly for the, particularly for the first three columns in the last row. So, in our attack, we only need to care about the last two columns of the last two rows. So next, let's see how many constraints are needed for the, for the three-round key check 3224. <coughs> and the answer is only 130. One from the padding and uh, two times 64 from the differences and uh, one from the last row. Clearly, uh, <coughs> clearly well, the number 130 is smaller enough and it can also make the system easier to solve. So the following pr procedures are not difficult. For the first method block, we use Guo Liu Song's method and uh, construct the linear system. The <coughs> complexity is 2 power 66. This is for the first block. And for the second block, the complexity is 2 power 31 because all bits are linear before the can operation in the third, third round. <coughs> so put them together. 
uh, 2 power 66 from block 1 and 2 power 31 from block 2. And uh, the overall complexity is 2 power 66, dominated by the first block. This is better than the previous best result given by Guo Liu Song. <coughs> but we notice that, but we note that the complexity of the first block is much higher than the second one. So we can improve this attack by decreasing the complexity of the first block and increasing the complexity of the second block. How? Remember the 130 equations constructed on the middle states? We can require them hold partially. And this will balance the complexities between the two blocks. <coughs> and this leads to our improved attack. <coughs> as we have required not all equations hold at the same time, we can compute the theoretical uh, probabilities when m equations when m equations hold out of 129. Here, not the 130 because one equation is not important. And the right column shows the theoretical result. We can see that if we want uh, all the equations hold, the probability is very low, but the probability will increase obviously even if we only require one equation not hold. <coughs> and in the middle column is the result, uh, is the practical probability we obtained from the experiments and we constructed systems and solve for the first message blocks. And the left column show the number of solutions we have obtained. From this table we can see that the practical th uh, probability and theoretical probability match very well. And uh, there are three mm, first message blocks when M chooses different values. <coughs> so the last question is how can we deal with the effect caused by the non-hold equation? And generally, a non-hold equation will lead to one mutant bit in state B. There are two types of the mutant bits in state B shown in the bar figure. Uh, in the left, in the left <coughs> one bit in the state B becomes one while well, it is supposed to be zero. This is type one, and this is a type two, which is just the opposite. And uh, these mutant bits are not difficult to resolve. <coughs> and basically, it costs two power k operations to deal with k mutant bits. And this will increase the complexity of the second block. <coughs> now let's see the overall, overall complexity. Uh, first, the theoretical one. Ci refers to the complexity of the block i, and m is the number of the holding equations. From this table, we can see that when the number m increases, Ci increases and uh, C2 decreases. And we can obtain the best uh, attack when m equals to 120. And uh, this is the practical complexity. <coughs> we, uh, we also obtain the best attack when m equals to 122. And uh, in this table, because we stop our program after we find find the first uh, uh, second message block, so the th practical complexity is a bit higher than the theoretical one. And our codes are publicly available at GitHub. And this is a toy example to find the second pre-image for the message one. And this is the padded message and this is that is. And there are two other second pre-images with M equals to 121, the 22 and 123. <laughs> uh, at last, this is a short summary. In this talk, we present a multi-block pre-image attack model and provide the best uh, theoretical complexity on three round and four round KCHAC 224 and 256. And uh, we give the first uh, practical pre-image attack on three round KCHAC 224. And these are the detailed results. Thanks for your attention.
Thank you very much. Are there questions? Yes. What happens with the larger versions of Ketchak, uh, 384, 512, can you get improved attacks but which are not practical or your improvements do not work at all for the larger versions? Larger, uh, larger, larger stage? Uh, la larger 384 or 512? Uh, we tried, but, but it did not work because uh, this in the capacity is too much. We, we cannot... Um, we cannot improve the current theorem to, to get a better constraint on the middle state. But we are still trying. <laughs> trained. Okay, but at the moment you don't have even a better theoretical... Uh, yeah, attack. we don't Thanks. have. More questions? No, then uh, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> <laughs>